KFI AM 640 is later with Mo Kelly. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. And I'm so tired of talking about last night's debate. Since last night's show ended, uh, did BBC multiple interviews for Spectrum TV and, and other outlets. The debate's over, okay? But I will say this as a coda to last night. I said last night, if you want to know who won the debate, just look at the empirical data the next day. Look at voter registrations, look at polling, look at uh, fundraising numbers. Those may not be in yet, but I know the, 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 the polling is in and I know that the voter registration increases are in and the numbers say what the numbers say. You don't need to hear it from me. But that was last night. Tonight. Of course, we'll give you the updates on the various fires which are consuming a lot of Southern California. We got to tell you about this high school voter education weeks, which are coming up to empower young voices. I'm not so sure that I'm down with that. I'll tell you why. It's a continuation of a story that we've covered before. And also, what economy is the best in the nation? There's a new study out. Mm, is California part of it? Well, probably because we're going to talk about it. And let me just say this. I, I have to pass out some compliments before we really get going to Stefan and to Mark Runner. First, good evening. And to all the sharp who's running around somewhere. Good evening. Mo. Earlier today, in the midst of the interviews I was doing, I had a chance to go to Long Beach and the Queen Mary for their weekly Long Beach Rotary Club meeting. And the guest speaker today was former L.A. County Sheriff Jim McDonald. Are we in trouble? No, not yet, at least. Not yet. And he, he, he was it was a very, very um, good um, speech he was giving, talking about modern day policing and also modern day security in a post 9-11 world. Of course, today is 9-11, 23rd uh, year commemoration of that fateful day. But I was able to just walk up to him afterward and he said, Mo, said, like he already recognized me. I said, Sheriff McDonald, nice to see you. Thank you for your remarks. And and he said to me that, and, and this is a true story. He said that he listens all the time and he says that we're very funny. I'll be damned. Are you sure he said we as in all of us? Yes. And put it this way. <laughs> put it, put it, put it this way. Yeah. Um, he, we're going to get him to come on the show in the coming days or weeks. It, it, you may not know there are published reports out there which list him as one of the finalists for the LAPD chief job right now that they're um, going through the interview process for. So he's tied up with that. Hopefully we can get him on prior to the choice being made. But it was a nice compliment to know that, you know, when he's on his way home from wherever he's coming from, he's usually listening to KFI and he's definitely listening to us. And I told him that I would pass that along to you. So, oh, yeah, it could have been so much worse. There could have been warrants <laughs> out for us. So I'll take this over that. Wait, yeah. wait, it's not mutually exclusive. If you had warrants before today, you still have warrants today. Well, you just worry about you. Let's let's, <laughs> let's move on, please. He did not arrest me on the spot, so I think I'm okay. He didn't run my information. I don't know. He might be maybe went back to his car and said, "Let me tell this Mo Kelly. Let me M Morris Mo Kelly." <gasps> no, no so fingers as, crossed. Right. So as far as I know, as far as I know, the next time I see him, it won't be with the details who's going to arrest me or something, you know, or if he should become LAPD chief. I, I don't know. I'm just saying today it was a very nice interaction and I appreciated his remarks on security post 9-11. And also, um, yeah, you know, the, the news is that he's one of the finalists. He didn't tell me that. I'm saying that's what you can read in the uh, published um, uh, sources on it. So. You know, he may be coming back into the public eye very soon. So just wanted to pass along that compliment because I could have been very selfish and arrogant and said that I was the only one who was funny, which would not have been untrue. You never would do something like <laughs> right. that. I, I know you too well at this point. <laughs> I, can't, I can't imagine such a thing happening. No, never, no. never. So I thought it'd be good to spread the love all the way around. So there was, it was a nice afternoon today as part of a busy day. So you can look forward to uh, former L.A. County Sheriff Jim McDonald coming on with us. That's in the future. Also tonight, we have to talk about Campbell. I can't even call it Campbell Soup anymore because they're dropping the soup portion from its name. And did you know this, Mark Ronner? You know how Tawala and I love to eat the goldfish in uh, the, the, the food drawer, the snack drawer down the hall? I have witnessed this. I did not know that they were, I should say, the it, 
goldfish were part of the Campbell Company. I didn't know that until today, too. I have consumed more than my fair share of goldfish. Oh, it's, my, it's a nightly regimen for me. It's a food group on its <laughs> yes, own. Yeah. Yes, and, and Michelle Cube, who usually restocks the, the food drawer, she bought the larger size. So I feel even more guilty about having one of, bags, one of those bags each and every night. No, it's good for you. I mean, uh, it's also good... Um, it's not good for us. Don't tell that lie. It's good if you're at home it having goldfish good. with a cocktail. No, no, no. Well. It tastes good, but not good for us. Like Jack Daniels tastes good. It's not good for me. Life's short, Mo. Anything that brings us even a momentary bit of pleasure, just just do it. No, but that's why I'm with you. That's why I'm eating them every day. Yeah. And I mean, who doesn't love a snack that smiles back? Oh, I never looked at the fish in the face. Because <laughs> I'm biting off heads. Yeah, that's, that's right. A, it's creepy now. I don't like food that can look back at me. And that's part of the reason why... I have a problem with lobster and shrimp in which I got to cut off the head. I, I don't want food that may move at any moment or seems like it could move or it's going to look back at me and judge me for eating it. No, I would prefer the, the animal's death throes to be out of the way before it gets to the table, if that's okay with everybody. Look, I don't want to see the cow slaughtered. I just want the hamburger on my plate. That's all it is. And you can say, Mo, that's that's really, really just selfish of you and unkind. You ought to be a vegan. No, I shouldn't. I should uh, enjoy food while I can. Just like you said, Mark, I'm going to have the small joys of life. And sometimes that includes a steak. I don't think we need to apologize to anybody for not being able to take ourselves out of the food chain immediately, but also not being bloodthirsty psychopaths who w wish to kill. There is an upside to being an apex predator. There really is. I love being at the top of the food chain. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Yeah, give it to me in a, a nice, neatly wrapped pink package and don't make me kill anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't get, want to get my hands dirty. I don't want to do any of the work. I don't want to go out there and forage for my food. I, I'm a, I would like to think myself as a hunter gatherer, but I don't want to actually put that to the test. Oh, I, I, you know, I watch a lot of old westerns and things like that. I would die immediately because I, I can't kill something. No, like that. and I'm not a survivalist. When I watch movies, like we were watching that movie Rebel Ridge the yeah. other day on Netflix, and anytime I see one of those survivalist scenes in a movie, I think about, gosh, this guy hasn't had a shower in like three days. How is he surviving? I said shower, and then, and then I don't want to give it all away, but there's a point where he's fishing by hand mm -hmm. for his food, and I said, "Okay, I'm dead. <laughs> I just don't have those skills, and I'm and I'm real picky with what I'm eating." They said, "Well, you eat anything if you're hungry." No, I won't. No, I won't. I will draw the line, and I will die of starvation. Now, you brought up something I noticed about the movie, which is that they were very meticulous with detail in Rebel Ridge, and they gave the guy a sweat ring on his on his sweatshirt throughout the whole film. He must have just stunk to high heaven to everybody you else on the you set. You noticed that, too, because <laughs> yes. it takes place over like the course of a week. They uh -huh. set it up. You got a whole week. And I know that mother father did not <laughs> see a shower at any point because they made it clear he didn't have a roof over his head he was out there in the wilderness for days upon days no one offered him a shower and he actually hugged people i said that's not possible no 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 no. when you're living rough like that you smell rough <laughs> oh and i was thinking about mm, mm. it's like oh golly well anyhow Paul Sharp, thank you for coming in and finally joining the show. Where you been? I was trying to uh, give you some props from the former L.A. County Sheriff Jim McDonald. I was enjoying the props. I was enjoying you and Mark debating over who was the funniest and, for some reason or another, leaving me out as if I don't have singers. <laughs> you should have been, going wait, you should have been here. If you were here, we could have included you, but look, out of sight, out of mind. Look, man, show prep, man. Show prep takes priority over these jokes. Okay. Well, when we come back, let's talk about high school voter education, which is not funny. There's a serious conversation to be had about pre-registering high school students. Is that what we want to do? We'll talk about it when we come back. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. But I'm one of those guys. I am very pro-education. I don't know if you'll meet someone who is more pro-education than me. Son of two educators when i was growing up it was understood you're going to college and you're also going to participate in the political process you're going to be a voter that was just drilled into me part of the reason why they sat me down in front of the tv to watch the 1984 rnc and dnc conventions and i'm thinking like this is not fun this is not cool but this is what was done in my house so 
What I'm about to say is coming from the standpoint of someone who's very high on education, civics, and government. High school voter education weeks are going to take place from September 16th through the 27th all across the state of California. This is to promote civic engagement among students. And you would ask me, it's like, Mo, you're not again, you're not all for this. Well, well there, there's more to this. It's led by Secretary of State Shirley Weber and State Superintendent of Public Instruction Tony Thurman, who I've dialogued with. He's come on the Mo Kelly show more than one occasion. Uh, the initiative encourages students age 16 and 17 to pre register to vote. The early registration allows them to be automatically registered when they turn 18. I want to be very careful here because there's a distinction to be made. Simply registering to vote is not the same as learning the civics and the importance of voting. It's one thing to say, hey, it's your civic duty. You know, it's you should uh, pre-register now so you can start learning. But if you do that without the context of a civics education or government class alongside of it, it's it's there's a disconnect where it's just a, a, a step that they're taking. It's an act that, that they're making, but they without the full understanding. Here's more on that. We are constantly told that we are the future. That our generation will make a difference. We are told that our time will come. That we are the leaders of tomorrow. Well, we shouldn't have to wait to make a difference. Our time is now. Our time is now. Our time is now. Hi, I'm California Secretary of State Dr. Cheryl Weber, and your time is now. Sure, we may not be old enough to vote, but we can contribute in other ways. And for those of us who are 16 or 17, we can actually pre-register to vote. Pre-register to vote. Pre-register to vote in California. Pre-register at 16 or 17. And vote when you turn 18. Because we don't have to wait to get informed. We don't have to wait to have our voices heard. We can volunteer to be poll workers. We can contribute to our communities. We can make change. Our time is now. Our time is now. Our time is now. Pre-register at 16 or 17. And vote at 18. And if you're 18, there's no excuse. Visit registertovote.ca.gov to pre-register or register to vote. Your time is now. What I don't like about it. No, excuse me. That's, that's the wrong phrasing. What I think is missing from it is an educational component. They call it high school voter education. But you're encouraging them to vote without the context of the historical importance of voting, how to best vet candidates, um, how the different um, elected officials interact with each other. What's the difference between a mayor and a and an L.A. County supervisor, for example? What's the difference uh, between a, um, a, a comptroller and an assessor? You know, how do you find out about the different judges on the ballot and their background? It's nice that if you increase the voter rolls, and this is the cynic of me coming out. When you pre-register these individuals, you are getting their information and you are allowing them to opt in to receiving all sorts of political information, which is different from civic education. When you pre-register to vote or register to vote, you have to declare a party. You have to de declare something. I'm a registered independent. And regardless of that, I get everything from everyone. I get phone calls. I get texts. I get emails and and it's it's you get inundated with candidates and stuff but you're not better educated and informed about the process now i'm a grown-ass man i've been doing this for a good 35 years now as far as voting goes it's a little bit different with me but for the 16 17 year old mind i wonder about how much information that they are giving obviously they're giving some sort of contact information how can you pre-register to vote and not give your contact information be it email or phone number and and know this nothing is done as far as registering anyone to vote Unless it serves the benefit of a particular party. Let me say that again. There is no desire to get people to vote 
or pre-register to vote unless there has been some study done or some indication that it will benefit a particular party. That's why I'm more for for civic education than it is for actual just pre-registering people to vote. It doesn't mean anything. Pre-registering is 16 and hopefully they'll vote at 18. How about a government class? How about a civics class? Because a lot of the people who are voting now can't tell you jack about how this government actually works on a civic level, a city level, municipality level, a, a state level or a federal level. Someone doesn't even uh, I would be willing to venture that most people don't even know the difference between a federal representative and a local representative. I don't know if people actually know what it means to be a mayor of a city and a CEO of that city. I don't know if people know what the basic responsibilities of a federal representative or a congressional representative. I know that I could open the phones and, and say, hey, tell me what a, a person, uh, uh, an elected member of Congress is responsible for. And I would get a lot of wrong answers thinking that, you know, Nancy Pelosi is responsible for the crime in San Francisco. No, she's not. That's not what a congressional representative does. For example, so it's nice to get people involved. It's nice to get people engaged. And it's nice to say, hey, you know, start thinking about this process, which may you may be part of in a good year and a half or so. But like we had the discussion about um, adding to the educational requirements of financial literacy. Why is it we don't have a civics and government requirement statewide? If we have one, I don't know of it. Please inform me, educate me. But I don't think so. Tawala, is there a, a um, an educational component? Did your kids have to take civics? Uh, I can't say that they did. Oh, okay. That's but see, that's my point. That's my point. And to but they can pre-register to vote. And I, I think you're putting the the cart before the horse. The idea of pre-registering teenagers right now to vote, to me, especially after the news of someone like a Taylor Swift backing uh, Kamala Harris, to me, imagine the number of of 17, say, about to be 18-year-olds who'll be thinking, oh, I once I get to vote, I'm going to vote like Swift without knowing anything, without knowing anything about, you know, uh, Vice President Harris at all outside of Taylor Swift says she's cool. Well, to me, your dangerous. point, to your point, um, since she, Taylor Swift, has made the endorsement for Kamala Harris, there has been a link that was shared from Taylor Swift to register to vote. Yes, I saw. And more than a half a million, last I checked, have followed that link and pre-registered. If you're a, a supporter of Kamala Harris, that's, that's great for them. Mm -hmm. But to your point... Yes, Taylor Swift ha has then exerted undue influence. And I'm not saying all of her Swifties are 16, 17 years old, but a lot of them are. Mm -hmm. And I would I would rather there be an, a rush to educate themselves about the process as opposed to a rush to support a candidate. But that's just me. I'm old school like that. And although, yes, we want more participation in the process, I would rather have more informed voters in the process who understand how this government on a local, state, and uh, federal level actually works. And this could be part of that, but presently it is not. It's later with Mo Kelly, KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. And when we come back, let's find out which state has the best economy in this nation. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. And let's talk about the top 10 state economies here in the U.S. And this is according to WalletHub. WalletHub used April data from the U.S. Census Bureau. The U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the United Health Foundation, and several other databases to determine the best and worst economies in the nation. The site analyzed a total of 51 places, including 50 states and Washington, D.C., based on three categories, economic activity, economic health, and innovation potential. Let's just do the top 10 state economies because we know Mississippi's at the bottom. This, we don't need to even, you know, it's, it's you know, you know. What we call it, Miss Obama? What would we call it? <laughs> Do you even need to add anything to Mississippi? Come on. Yeah, I know. It's it's Mississippi. It came in last. I mean, right. If you add another insult to Mississippi, <laughs> you're just uh, you're spiking the ball in the end zone. All right. Here we go. Number 10 of the top state economies in the United States.
Arizona. Kind of surprising, actually. Number nine. Washington, D.C. Yes, I know. It's not a state, but it was included in the study. Okay, I know. Civics. I haven't forgotten. Number eight. North Carolina. In, in the 10 best? 10 best. I'll be damned. Right. It's, it's, you know, it's enlightening. Not so sure I agree, but. Is there any information about how this could be? <laughs> look, they're, they're based upon economic activity, economic health, and innovation potential, which is kind of abstract, but it's using innovation data. potential? Yeah, I know. Concept <laughs> of wealth? Yeah, it's a bit sketchy. Like maybe one super rich guy moved into that state and that moved him up the list. Possibly. Maybe <laughs> Texas is on this list. I don't know. Interesting. But, you know, using data from the U.S. Census Bureau, U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and the United Health Foundation, and uh, and several other databases. I'm reading. Several, several other, other databases. Sus. <laughs> Look, I'm just reading what they have. Coming in at number seven. Florida. Yeah, no applause for Florida. Hey. Yeah. Now now it's really going to get hanky. Number six. And this state has a better economy than Florida, North Carolina, Washington, D.C., and Arizona. Coming in at number six is Colorado. Oh, the marijuana. I can see oh, yeah. yeah. Good point. Yep. Good point. Good point. Coming in at number five of the top ten state economies in the United States. The eagle has landed. California, number five. Only five. Oh, five? Right. right. That's insane. Right. I know. For real. We have the world's <laughs> fifth largest economy. And we're the fifth best state. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it the exodus? What's happening uh, here? This doesn't work out. And look, I know. We've already decided that this is a sus list to use your terminology. <laughs> I like and, to stay on top of the uh, <laughs> the most current terms. And, you know, what they're using is criteria somewhat abstract and random. By words. Vibes. It's all <laughs> <Yeah>. vibes. So, <laughs> this guy. so California, we only hit at number five of the top ten state economies. Because I'm thinking state economies is much more uh, specific and you, you can you can tabulate it. We're talking about GDP or job growth or things of that. Kind, you know, but, you know, innovation potential. I, I don't know how you, I don't know how you, you know. How do you quantify? It? Yes, yes, that's the word for it's it. It's a holistic grade, right? <laughs> yeah. So we have California 5, Colorado, Colorado at 6, Florida at 7, North Carolina at 8, Washington, D.C. at 9, and Arizona at 10. Coming in at number 4. Elon Musk and Texas. So Texas has a better state economy than California. In your face, Gavin Newsom. In your face. Well, let's see if he does to Texas what he's done with Twitter. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Stefan didn't move, so I guess he didn't find it funny. Oh, I, uh, I, you know. We got a little thumb on the scale over in the air mix room. <laughs> Did you do something to piss him off? Never. Okay. I treat him with kid gloves constantly. Coming in at number three, the top 10 state economies in the United States, according to Wallet Hub. And it's very, very suspect. <laughs> Massachusetts. Bull. I don't think so. Bull. Don't tell me that Massachusetts, with a, a, a population and GDP 150th, of California has a better state economy. That makes now, no sense. Uh, now, if they're talking about... They're exporting Kennedys. That's all they do. They, yeah, I'm saying, uh, if they're talking about economies based on, say, like, money spent or cost of living in a certain specific area, if they say, well, in this one area, cost of living and what's made, I'm saying there, there's ways you can fudge the numbers and make... Ma Massachusetts has zero look, innovation it, it, look, potential. If if you they if burned witches there, okay. If you're only asking a hundred people in each state, you know what their uh, yearly income is and things like that, you can easily come up with something. Look, the biggest thing in Massachusetts, arguably, are the Red Sox and the Boston Celtics, and neither of them are top 
franchises in terms of economic viability or franchise worth value. I, I just don't know what they're pulling from. You know, it, it's supposed to be economic activity. It's not like they have a, a great tourism industry. Martha's Vineyard is not all that as far as tourists. Yeah. The economic health. Mm, I don't know what, what the gross domestic product. Uh, you There's know, there's got to be something in there. OK, I'm going to look this up while we get to uh, innovation potential. Massachusetts, two number three. Now, you really want to laugh? Is everyone ready for a laugh? Here's number two. Get ready. Freaking tall. Well, that is some number two right there. <laughs> that is definitely some number two. Utah has a better economy than Texas, California, and Florida. Is that what you're telling me? It, it, that's what they're telling me, but is that what you want me to believe? This is mm. rigged. You, it's all freaking rigged. Tall. All right. <laughs> I'm trying to figure this out, man. This no, you won't. Weird. Let's get ready for number one. Review quickly. Number 10 was Arizona. Number 9, Washington, D.C. Number 8, North Carolina. 7, Florida. 6, Colorado. 5, California. 4, Texas. 3, Massachusetts. 2, Utah. And the number 1 state economy in the U.S., according to Wallet Hub, take a bow, Mark Ronner, the state of Washington. Well, how about that? But I can at least see the argument because of tech and Starbucks and I don't know what else is up there. Video games. Video it, games. It really is the hub of a lot of yeah. pop culture stuff that drives drives the culture. But I didn't expect it to be number one over California. Massachusetts. Ma Massachusetts. <laughs> Mass Easy for you to say. <laughs> Massachusetts. You know. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Uh, they have fuel, oil, nuclear uh -huh. reactors. Uh, we got that. And mechanical appliances, we got electronics, that. vehicles, aircraft, and spacecraft are built. Wait, wait, wait. You don't tell me that their aircraft industry is doing better than It's the California. biggest export. Their biggest export. But I don't know, like McDonnell Douglas, Hughes Aircraft. Right now, the I know state those uh, are <laughs> is producing some $10.6 billion a year in just aeronautical and... Um, but we have Hollywood. We have Disneyland. No, no, no. Hollywood, is now, Hollywood is now in, in Louisiana and Detroit and Canada. Hollywood isn't in Hollywood anymore. Well, it's in Georgia, actually. That's oh, true. Georgia, it's Atlanta specifically. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Washington, take a bow. Yeah. Number one state economy in the whole country. Utah is supposed to be Number above two. California. Listen, Howard Hughes, <laughs> Howard Hughes tr only trusted Mormons to handle his money. So maybe he was onto something. Ooh. Uh, this is the, an objective historical fact. Don't uh -huh. don't ooh me about that. Ooh. <laughs> How dare you ooh me? <laughs> it's later with Mo Kelly. KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Mark Ronner, I noticed I heard you in the promo for our fire coverage. And I think that's the first time I've heard you in a KFI promo. You are moving on up like George Jefferson to the east side. It had to be a mistake, right? No, it's it just, not a mistake. No, no, it just slipped through. It's, you, it's fine. You were doing news like six days a week for a while, weren't you? I, I feel like I paid some dues, but you're never fully paid. Okay. Um, no, I was. of course I'm happy to be in a promo, but definitely not used to it. Well, you were doing news six days a week. You're in a promo. You were hosting here. Uh, when I was gone in, in Mexico, look, pretty soon you'll be running this station. I'm like the Ali Velshi of KFI. I just go where I'm needed. Look, I'll talk to you off air about that situation. I see. Uh, I think that we should go to the news and brews thing tomorrow and uh, get a few pints in us before we come to work. Have look, you done that before? <laughs> Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I make it a point not to have alcohol before I come on the air. Well, it might be fun um, to do that on a, I guess it'd be a Thursday, show up to work a little half in the bag. We all know that you don't get up before 4 p.m. <laughs> so <laughs> don't tell that lie about going out to News and Brews at 9 a.m. in Cerritos. That means getting in the car at 7.30, 8 o'clock. You are not going to do that. What, did you install a webcam? What, no, but uh, you told me yourself, okay, you're like Dracula. Nostra Nosferatu. I get up early to support my uh, beloved co-workers. Okay. All right, then. All right, I'll pick you up at 8. How about that? I'll just be getting to bed. <laughs>
KFI AM 640. We are live everywhere on that iHeartRadio app. What comes to mind when I think of 9-11? Tragedy. Probably the, hopefully, the most horrific thing that I'll ever have to witness in my life. KFI. And KOST HD2. Los Angeles. Orange County. Live.